<laughs> hello, 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 and welcome to a Tuesday night live stream. It is February 27th. Hello to all of my wonderful friends. It is so nice to see all of you beautiful lawyer chicklets. Hello, everybody. Please make sure someone said our beloved queen. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. Um, please be so kind as to like the video. Take your shoes off. Get comfortable. Relax. Get your favorite drink, okay? Whether that be some water, a glass of wine, some tea, some coffee, some juice. I don't know what you like to drink, boo-boo. And I'm not here to judge, but let's all enjoy a drink. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take a little time to... um. I got mascara in my eye and I just realized that. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to get some hydration going while all of you like the video. That way YouTube can know that we're out here in these YouTube streets. Mm, someone's having a cup of tea. That's great. Let's do a traditional icebreaker, but the icebreaker itself will not be so traditional. We're just doing an icebreaker, which we have not done for the past several videos. As you all know, this is the first scheduled live stream I've had to, I've had in over a month because I've been in jury trials back to back to back to back. And I will say that being in um, jury trials are really my favorite thing. I absolutely, that's my favorite part of the job is being on trial um, or in trial. I much prefer that to everything else. I think it's trial, then motions, hearings, and then everything else is like a distant third. <laughs> you know, so I've been having the time of my life in all these trials, but what it means is that I have to focus and so I can't be here while I'm focusing. There's certain types of trials I can do and still stream, but the types of trials I was doing recently, I cannot. Because uh, as you all know, I'm a felony attorney, so I handle really serious felony cases. Now, because I work for a public defender's office, that means that sometimes I'm taking less serious, serious cases to trial. And with those, you know, it's, you know, they don't, they're not as time consuming after the trial day is over. And so you can take a little break, but in like, say like a murder trial or something like that, you just can't like for me personally, anyway, maybe there's some super person out there that can, but I don't. And then also it's not a good look, you know, for my clients, uh, you know, their life is on the line and they're like, here's my lawyer playing around on YouTube while I'm in trial. Cause you know, they watch this just like everybody else does. So I definitely, um, want them to know that I am hundred percent focused on their cases, which I am. And, um, instead of doing this in my leisure time, I end up doing trial prep. So I'm so happy to see all of you. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the amazing response to my rant video, which is the last video that I did, which was completely unplanned. Thank you for the amazing response to all the shorts. If you did not know, there are two new shorts that are up. There's also a rant video up on Jody Hildebrand. I was also on Hidden True Crime. Um, and I was also on um, True Crime Daily. And I was also on Law and Crime. So you can search me here on YouTube and you'll see me um, on those uh, various appearances, but I cannot neglect to spend time with my beautiful lawyer chicklets. And so here I am. I am so grateful for all 226 of you that are here. I'm lucky it's not five of you here because <laughs> listen, if you don't kill, you don't eat. And if you upload, you're killing. I have not been uploading. I have not been streaming. So I want to thank you all so, so much. I'm so grateful for all of your presence. Thank you for returning. I so appreciate you. So why don't we get to the icebreaker? So instead, let me look at the comment section because I haven't looked at it for a while. Um, so instead of the, hi, Rachel Mills. Hey. Hey, everybody. It's so nice to see all of you here. Um, someone asked me about my makeup. So this blush is Rare Beauty. This eyeshadow is not an eyeshadow. It's actually like a tinted um, shimmer highlight situation, but, it's, you know, uh, from Rare Beauty as well. My foundation is from Huda Beauty. My, um, uh, what do they call that? My contour stick is from 
Fenty Beauty. <laughs> they maybe all the um celebrities that make makeup needs to get a little bit more um creative with the names because it's all something beauty, uh, like their name and beauty, <laughs> other than rare beauty, which is not her uh Selena Gomez's name. Um, I am not wearing eyelash strip extensions. I'm wearing eyelash extensions that were put on by my um, not on the bottom, but on the top that were put on by, uh, the lady that does my nails. These are my, um, nails for, uh, what was that holiday? Uh, oh yeah. Valentine's day. I'm like, I don't know why I want to say Thanksgiving. These are my Valentine's day nails. I hope you like them. Um, I had a great Valentine's day. I hope you all had a great Valentine's day. Anyway, let me get right to this. So this icebreaker is not traditional. It is what you guys, um, brought up to me um well I brought to you on the channel hold on one second here we go so this is from the community page and look always look for the community page because I do post things there even if I'm not posting on YouTube and it's a great way for us to stay in touch with each other also follow me on Instagram where I am Natalie Lawyer Chick YouTube and on Twitter where I am Nat Lawyer Chic C H I C. There's no K at the end. So I said, hey Chicklets, in the next live stream I'm going to do a different type of icebreaker. Can you please tell me? This is a month ago, but we're finally getting to it. Tell me what culture you're from and what are some of your superstitions of your culture in the comments below. I'm going to share mine as well. So first, let me before I um, and then also feel free to share them in the comment section, because maybe when we're doing a reading of the super chats and things like that, if we have any super chats this live stream, um, I will also read your cultural superstitions. So my culture is um, I like to say my culture is like Jamaican American culture, as in my family are immigrants from Jamaica and I was born in America. And one of the superstitions that I learned from my grandmother was like, if you rub somebody or like, you know, help some like massage, like say someone has like a pain and you like rub that pain for them, like massage it for them or something like that, put a little tiger bomb or Ben Gay on it. Um, before you leave the room, you should hit the door jam three times to leave the pain behind in the room so you don't take it with you. Don't put your purse on the floor or else you won't have any money. Don't sweep your your foot with a broom or else you won't get married. Um, I have a whole bunch of them that like I kind of do like automatically because that's those are just like how I was raised, even though it's funny because I'm an atheist and I don't believe in like the supernatural. I am definitely superstitious <laughs> and I will not put my purse on the floor because then you won't have any money and people know me for that. I, I will not put my purse on the floor. So here's what some of your guys' superstitions are. Um, Heister... I'm sorry if I say this, this, okay. Oh, Hysterikon's fit or filth says, I'm from Sweden on midsummer night. Young girls go out to pick a bouquet of seven different kinds of flowers. We then put it under our pillow to dream of the person we're going to marry. I don't think anyone still believes in it, but I did it as a girl. Grown up, me can only think of how many bugs were in those flowers. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, Metroid 250, Ty Mix here. When making new buildings, there should always be a spirit house around and place for the spirits to live and be happy. If you don't make one, they will make sure to come to the building and bring bad luck, causing a downfall to the business bankruptcy and bad reputation. Respect the spirits and honor them, uh, their space that was stolen from them. I think that is so interesting. Thank you. MC Jono is from Botswana. And if you're African, you know how superstitious many of us are. Well, I did. I don't know if you guys know this. I used to live in Ghana, which is not obviously not Botswana, but um, it's in Western Africa. And they definitely had many superstitions that were very similar to Jamaican and African-American superstitions. So those things have traveled through the diaspora. Um one superstition that comes to mind relates to bad weather. Traditionally, they often say that if you're walking near a river or lake during a heavy storm, rainy season, you may see a giant reptile appear in the sky from behind the clouds. They have actually been a bunch of sightings, and we even have a name for this menacing creature. My guess is it's meant to scare kids and deter them from playing outside during a storm. Well... Especially if you're near a bottle of water, body of water, you might attract some lightning. So <laughs> that's a good idea to deter kids. Um, yeah. Oh, here's a here's a kind of like creepy one. Like if you're home and you think you're alone and you hear someone call your name, don't answer because it could be a duffy, which is the Jamaican word for 
ghost. Duppy is a ghost. So it could be a Duppy calling your name. And then like, I don't know, what do they do? They take you to hell or they possess you or something like that's one of the like ones. I'm American descendant of enslaved people. A superstition I grew up with is that you never answer to someone calling your name if you can't see them. Oh my, I swear to God, I did not read that on the screen. I was just looking at the camera and like, oh, I just remembered another Jamaican superstition. So apparently, like I said, there's a lot of crossover if you're a person of African descent. There's a lot of crossover in traditional superstitions between like, if you're from an African country, uh, if you're from America, if you're Caribbean, if you're from say the South or something, there's differences, but there is from my travels, a through line in superstitions. I cannot, this is a so fortuitous that I, fortuitous that I came across this. So um, you never answer to someone calling your name if you can't see them as it may be a demon trying to trick you. H hypocritically, whenever mama called me from the other room, I sure knew better than to ignore it. I know that's right. <laughs> well, um, if your mom calls, so uh, when Jamaican grandparents or parents call you from another room, you can't just say yes. You have to say yes, mama, or yes, grandma, or yes, mommy. You can't say just yes or no, you have to say yes, auntie, yes, uncle, like you have to address them by their title, which is very interesting to me. It's a sign of respect. I just really hated the step on a crack, break your mama's back superstition because mine passed when I was four. Walking on the sidewalks made me anxious. Oh, the real Roy G. Biv, that makes so much sense that that would make you feel that way. Oh my gosh, I completely get that. And also I'm kind of, you can get kind of like OCD with superstitions. And I don't mean that literally or in a clinical sense. I, I mean that in the figurative way in which people use that term colloquially. Um, and so it can make you become anxious if like you, can't avoid it's really hard to avoid cracks in the sidewalk you know and then your mom's already deceased i'm so sorry honey that's so scary so pacific northwest native american we don't whistle or eat outside at night um i was taught to not that well as a jamaican i was taught that black that women should not whistle whatever that's all about i'm a terrible whistler too i wish i was better at it that women shouldn't whistle and i heard from african-american people that whistling at night was bad luck um, black American from the South and the ones you mentioned, purse not being on the floor and sweeping feet being unlucky resonate with me. Although sweeping feet more specifically means you're going to go to jail. And if that happens, you're supposed to spit on the broom. So for us, sweeping your feet means that you're not going to get married. And as a remedy to accidentally sweeping your own feet or somebody sweeping your feet, you're supposed to spit on the broom. So that also is a crossover. There are, there was this Jamaican lady that I spoke to, like this older one who told me that she was taught that sweeping your foot with the broom meant you were going to get married. So, but that's, I, I, she's the only person I've ever heard say that, but there are, you know, different interpretations, but either way, it's supposed to generally be unlucky if you sweep your foot with a broom. Another one is not to wash linens during Christmas week or you'll wash a family member away. They'll die. That is fascinating. Okay, I'll do two more. My mom is South Korean. My favorite superstition is that you don't run a fan in the room at night because your soul will be sucked out of your mouth. It's hot out here, though, so I don't follow that one. I can appreciate someone who also takes the shoes off in the home. <laughs> wow, that is so interesting. Who saw what sits? Thank you very much for that. And J.M.M. Barkovich. Uh, 8734 with the cutie cutie pie puppy in the uh, avatar. My family is Slovenian and Croatian. Our superstition is the first person to cross your threshold on New Year's Day must be a dark haired male. OK, <laughs> my grandmother for decades blamed Maggie Palmer, a redheaded Irish neighbor for the death of her best milking cow. Maggie crossed the threshold before my great uncle that year, 1940s. I was born in 1961 and grew up hearing the story from my grandma every New Year's. Wow. 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 These are also fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing them with me. I'll share more of them. I got up to Miss List 2581 Able. So uh, there's there's like a whole bunch of these. So um, I'll share more of them as time goes on um, in a future live stream. But I hope that you all enjoy that. Um, I don't know, man. I got, oh, it's like one of my eyelashes flipped in. They flipped in. It's really annoying. Oh. Oh, I got it. Oh, the relief. <laughs> the relief. There's the bastard. Can you see it? Hold on. 
There it is. There's the culprit. Oh my gosh. The, I feel so good. <laughs> Guys, I've missed you all. Max Sauce, hey, I've missed the community that we have on this channel. Thank you so, so much. Okay. Oh, my gosh. It literally just flipped one of my... So, it's funny. I don't have on bottom eyelash extensions, obviously. For, so, naturally, my lower lashes are longer than my upper lashes. And as a result, sometimes they flip into my eye. And so, I'm frequently digging in my eye, which is not sanitary, but I got to get it. I got to get it. Cameo Stark says whistling at night equals equal equals evil spirits. Thank you. Keep sharing those. OK, so we're going to go on to the main topic. Um, let's go. So Diddy is being sued again. We have gone through each and every single one of the lawsuits that have been filed against him. There have been some answers filed by his attorneys in the ones that did not settle because um, he settled the one with Cassie in one day, which is just bombshell. Um, and so we do need to discuss those answers. But for right now, we're going to discuss the newest lawsuit against Diddy for SA. Now, you may got have gotten a little bit annoyed at the icebreaker and the chit chat and the talking. But there are certain subjects that if you discuss them on YouTube, you have to wait a period of time, usually it's like 15, 20, sometimes 30 minutes into the live stream so that um, they can do their little advertisery thing. So they don't want you to talk about things like SA at the beginning of these live streams and they'll demonetize your videos if you do. And also I have to use certain terms like SA, for example, but what I am talking about is assault of a sexual nature. So I'm going to uh, use some abbreviations. Uh, people in the comment section should be able to help you to understand those abbreviations if you're not familiar. So this was in the United States Federal Court, Southern District of New York. We have also covered Cuba Gooding Jr.'s lawsuit and or some of them, the allegations against him. And he is also mentioned in this. So it's Rodney Jones, who is a music producer. Oh, I want to also say this. These are not criminal charges. These are civil charges. But, um, it, you know, even if it was criminal, Sean Combs is presumed to be innocent until proven. Otherwise, he is not guilty of anything until it's proven in court. He is not liable for anything until it's proven in court. It is Rodney Jones's attorney's burden to prove the case against Sean Combs and everyone else that's named in lawsuits with him. Sadly, his own son, Justin Dior Combs, is also named in this lawsuit, which makes me really uncomfortable because, uh, you know, I think Justin, hold on, let me see how old he is. I think Justin is an adult, like a legal adult, but he's still a very young person. So Justin Combs, um, he's 20. Okay. So he's, mm, Justin Combs, is he 20? No, that's a damn lie. He's 30. There was another Justin Combs that plays for UCLA that was 20. So, okay. So Justin Combs is 30 years old. He doesn't look it at all, but he's a full grown man. Okay. So I feel a little bit better, but like if he was like 18, 19, 20, I, I don't like the young people. You know, I really like to keep them out of things because they can always change and have a future ahead of them, but he's 30 years old. So we'll just treat him like an adult. So Ethiopia have Tem Ram. Hab Temarium, excuse me for how I pronounce that, Lucy and Charles Grange, Christina Corum, Chalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, my goodness, Combs Global Enterprises, and John and Jay Doe's 1 through 10, and ABC Corporations 1 through 10. So a lot of, I told you guys this before, but a lot of times in these lawsuits, they'll have John Doe's name because they'll say basically the discovery process might uncover more people that are liable for these claims, and they want to be able to bring them into the case without having to file a separate lawsuit for them. This also comes with a trigger warning. So we have to think to ourselves, the Cassie lawsuit came with a trigger warning, which this is completely irregular, highly irregular. I have to wonder if there's some level of coordination between counsels for Cassandra Ventura and all the other plaintiffs, or if inspired by um, Cassandra's lawsuit, people thought, let me go and try to get some money, or 
Is it okay? The reckoning is here. I don't have to fear retribution because someone else was brave enough to step up and I'm also going to step up. It could be any of those things, you know? So I'm not vouching for the veracity of any of the claims made in this lawsuit. I'm simply going to explain what the legalese really means. Okay. So I uh, just want you guys to know that. Um, you know, now with the Cassie lawsuit, that one did seem to have a bit of credibility to it, especially with it settling so early. Um, and so that's how I personally saw it. And that's how I analyzed it. But you can think whatever you want. You can believe that this is true or not true. And all opinions here are welcomed on this subject because I'm not wedded to one side or the other because I don't know anything about any of these people. Plaintiff Rodney, Little Rod Jones, Mr. Jones, hereby alleges as and for his complaint against Defendant, I hate when this happens. <clears throat> Sean Combs, defendant Justin Dior Combs, defendant Lucian Charles Grange, defendant Ethiopia Habit Habtamarium, Ethiopia Habtamarium, Miss Habtamarium, defendant Christina Corum, Miss Corum. Defendant, Chalice Records, okay, all the defendants, as follows. The court has personal jurisdiction over the defendants under the consent with the constitutional requirements of due process in that the defendants, and consistent, okay, in that the defendants acting directly or through his agents or apparent agents committed one or more of the following. They transaction business within the state. They made a contract in the state. They committed a tortious act in the state or they own real estate in the state. All of those could be reasons to give jurisdiction to the state of New York. If any of these people conduct business in the state, commit a crime or a tort in the state, own property in the state or make contracts in the state of New York, that would give New York jurisdiction over this lawsuit if it arose from any of those activities. From September of 2022 to the date of this filing. Defendants have consistently and purposely availed themselves of the privilege of conducting activities within New York, thus invoking the benefits and protections of New York law. In return for those benefits and protections, defendants must submit to the burdens of litigation in New York. <clears throat> <clears throat> this litigation arises from or relates to the tortious activities defendants visited upon defendants in the state of New York, California, Florida, and the United States Virgin Islands. This tortious, con tortious conduct violated United States federal RICO laws. This is a RICO lawsuit. Wow. It's a racketeering, um, basically a widespread conspiracy to use an organization like sometimes the mob is the easiest um, example, but a company, um, a school has been found uh, or the Board of Education in Georgia has been found to be participating in racketeering, coming together for the common goal of committing a crime um, would fall under the United States federal RICO laws. Um, requiring defendants to litigate these claims in this district does not offend traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice, which is, when it comes to jurisdiction and venue, one of the constitutional considerations for jurisdiction and venue, um, where basically it could be that someone made a contract 20 years ago in the state of New York but they don't have any other interactions with the state of New York. And so therefore it would offend traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice to sue that person who doesn't live in New York in New York. And so that could sometimes be a reason to dismiss the case for lack of personal or subject matter jurisdiction. And so what they're saying here is that jurisdiction should be in New York and it goes along with fair play and substantial justice. Plaintiff's claims arise from some conduct occurring by defendants in New York. And because it's federal, Federal courts can address, even though you bring the case in New York because you can say the gravamen of the case occurred in New York, it can also address actions that occurred in other states because it's federal. So it crosses state lines. So these are the parties. These are, hey, Ryan Blackhawk, nice to see you, friend. And please make sure that you all have your shoes off. You're comfortable. You're in my house. Have a seat, grab a drink, and like the video. Thank you so much. So Rodney Jones is an American artist and music producer. Mr. Jones resides in the state of New York and California. Sean Combs is a rapper and record executive popularly known by his stage names Puff Daddy, Puffy P, Diddy Diddy, Brother Love or Love. Mr. Combs came to fame in the early 90s with his record label, 
Bad Boy Records. He rose to prominence in the music and entertainment industry over the decades and is regularly referred to as a hip hop mogul. Mr. Combs resides oh, in that address. I don't know why we had to put his address without redacting it, but OK, this is so shady using this picture of Sean Combs <laughs> in the lawsuit. How shady boots. <laughs> Was this like during the pandemic or something like that? I have never seen. I mean, I did show you guys this one video where he was like on the Graham Norton show or something and he seemed like he was blasted. He didn't seem like he was doing too good. But I've never seen him look this disheveled outside of that video. So this is very much an intentional choice. <laughs> Completely off topic. I'm sorry. But if you're going to make the choice to use that picture, I'm going to comment on it. Defendant Justin Dior Combs is the son of Mr. Combs and Miss Misa Hilton. J uh, Justin Combs was born and it's also not necessary to put photographs identifying famous people in initial filings it's completely unnecessary so this was definitely shots that were fired gratuitously and I'm here for it <laughs> So is the son of Mr. Combs and Misa Hilton. Combs was born December 30th, 1993. How could someone born in 1993 be 30 years old? Oh my gosh. He is a producer and actor. He has appeared on TV series like Catfish, the TV show Wild and Out and Hip Hop Squares, none of which I've ever seen. So defendant Justin Dior Combs resides at this address that we don't need to see. I didn't know that they were going to be addressed here. So this is a picture of Justin Combs. Defendant Lucian Charles Grange is CEO of Defendant Universal Music Group. So that's him. Bet you didn't wake up think you were going to be in this lawsuit, did you, Lucian? Defendant Ethiopia Hab Tamarium is the former CEO of Defendant Motown Records, the parent company of Love Records. Hab Tamarium resides at that address. Christina Corum is the chief of staff to Sean Diddy Combs. And Defendant Chalice Recording Studios, the popular recording studio, here is their emblem. This is so strange. You know, for those of you that, you know, may have read this for entertainment's sake or just out of curiosity, it is informative for me to tell you that it's really not the norm to put business logos, pictures of parties in an initial filing because the courts are really just concerned with you establishing the elements of the claim or at least alleging the elements of the claim. And then later on, discovery will show whether or not those elements are fulfilled. So I'm just, you know, making sure you know that that's a little, it's a little strange. It's not, it's, it definitely, with the trigger warning, seems to be, I filed this lawsuit knowing that these are famous people and that people are going to read this. Here are some visual aids, which is very interesting to me. Motown Records is a record label with a principal place of business located. And it doesn't make me any it doesn't make me any more or less skeptical of the claim. It's just a difference that I'm pointing out. And it's a commonality I've seen with these Diddy lawsuits. And it's it's like a consistent thing with the Diddy lawsuits. But that's not the norm in practice. OK. All right. So Motown Records is a record label with a principal place of business located at 1750 Vine Street. Ethiopia, Ethiopia Habtamarium was the chairman and CEO of Universal Music Group Motown Records. Defendant Universal Music Group is a record label with the principal place of business in Santa Monica, California, and Love Records is based in Los Angeles, California. Defendant Combs Enterprise is a diverse portfolio of business and investments that includes music, fashion, fragrance, beverage, marketing, film, television, and media properties. They have a principal place of business in New York, New York. <clears throat> Rodney, little Rod Jones Jr. is from Windy City, Chi-Town. This is unprofessional. Windy City, Chi-Town. Why would you, that's not professional. Hold on one second. I'm just looking. Yeah, so Windy City and Ch and Chi-Town are both, because I was like, is there an actual Windy City or are they both nicknames? Are both nicknames for Chicago. You would not do this in a filing. Um, strange, really weird. Okay, I don't know. I don't really like that. Okay. 
and I've told you guys this before, I prefer formality when it comes to filings and when it comes to court presentation. I think formality is underrated and highly important because it cuts through a bunch of noise and gets right to the heart of the matter. And this is highly informal and I don't like that. He was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. He is the second oldest son and fourth child out of nine siblings. He came from a long line of gospel music influencers. Mm, okay. He started playing instruments at the age of five. He began playing drums in church. And at the age of 13, he picked up playing the guitar from 13 to present day. He has taught himself to play over 13 instruments. What is this relevant to? Mr. And here's a picture of Mr. Jones and his church, the child prodigy. I'm assuming this is Mr. Jones right here. Hmm. Mr. Jones is considered a musical prodigy. His talents have led him to produce and create a commercial marketplace for music that has been recorded by some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in the music history. Throughout the duration of his career, Jones has worked the South side of Chicago music scene. Uh, this should either all be capitalized Chicago music scene or only Chicago should be cap capitalized playing with the following legendary greats, Georgia Mass Choir, Donna Loris, the Clark Sisters, and Smokey Norfolk. On or about August 2022, Mr. Jones received a call from Mr. Combs requesting that he produce several songs on a rhythm and blues album titled The Love Album Off the Grid. Mr. Jones agreed, and his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since. So that's who he is, and that's how he came into contact with Mr. Combs. Um, weird, right? Okay, why the bio? It might become relevant, but does this not give you weird vibes? I don't know. It's just weird. Like it's not relevant so far. Um, and it's he's not self representing. He has counsel, and the language is not professional. It's not legal, and it doesn't go towards advancing a claim of anything. So you just, that's why it's 73 pages and 73 pages is way too long for any claim. It's like an entry. It's, it's almost like it's written because he wants his pilot to get picked up or something. It's not written like this is for a judge to decide whether or not, you know, on a motion to dismiss or something, this claim should go forward. Uh, it just seems a little strange. And I don't know if it's just, you know, some people are just quirky, but as a lawyer, you should put the kibosh on that and make it be as professional as possible. So I am not feeling it so far. Okay. Why did a lawyer write it this way? I don't know. It's very strange to me. I'd love to hear from another lawyer what they think, especially a New York lawyer. This is very strange to me or even a federal uh, civil lawyer. Okay. So from September 22 to November 23, Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs's love album. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. Jones resided at Mr. Combs' residence located in Los Angeles, New York City, and Miami, Florida. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay. Mm-hmm. Seems to be how, I mean, you're working on his album, so you're doing a job, and he can work from anywhere. So him flying out his producers to be multiple places is not suspicious to me at all. But also that's kind of how you can get, kind of get sucked into these situations. So I'm sorry, my, my camera keeps moving. Sorry about that. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love album. Okay. We could have gotten to this three pages ago. The claims raised in his complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video, audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. Very interesting. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Combs took Jones's cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Okay, well, there are criminal courts for that. Um, Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and dis distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. The displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. Mr. Combs providing laced alcoholic beverage to minors and um, 
adult workers at his homes in California, New York, and the U.S. Virgin Islands in Florida. There's overlap here with the claims from Cassie, which everyone has read at this point. So is that because there's an overlap in behavior or it or did they conform their filing uh, to fit with the pattern established by Cassie to try to seem more credible? I don't know which is which, but it's one of those two, right? Combs chief of staff, Christina Corum, instructing her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption. Christian Combs drugging and essaying a woman. OK, so I just want to say so far, some of the thoughts that I'm having on this now that we're on pages seven and eight is that um, this summary of events so far does not say what Combs has done to Jones so you are witnessing someone else committing a crime is not a tort against you unless the person's committing the tort against you. So it's not a claim that you can file if you saw someone else being essayed. That person essayed has the right to file that claim. That doesn't mean that something doesn't happen to him. I'm just saying so far, these things are very interesting and informative, but don't right at this moment go to supporting whatever claim it is that he has. It also makes me wonder about suing for Rico uh, because that is really something the government does, pursuing a Rico charge, um, unless you're saying that through the course of racketeering, he in some way committed a tort against you. He harmed you civilly. So we'll see. Um, Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact of his public interest, public image of Cassie Ventura's, Ventura's lawsuit. Let me say that again. Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact of his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. It's just not a well-written uh, thing. That's why I'm struggling with it. But basically, using T.D. Jakes to make himself look better after the Cassie Ventura lawsuit came out. Also not something that's actionable. Young Miami's cousin and her assistant essaying Mr. Jones. Okay. Is Young Miami being sued or the cousin? Mm. Okay. I don't see them as parties in this lawsuit that's interesting okay young miami's cousin sexually mr jones actor cuba gooding jr essaying and assaulting mr jones but cuba gooding jr is not named in this rapper redacted on mr combs's yacht consorting with underage girls and adult workers R.E.B. singer redacted in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home consorting with underage girls and adult workers. All right, let's see what these... This writer spoke with several employees of the yacht rented, not my, by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands who personally witnessed defendant Corum instruct her staff, Brennan Paul, Frankie Stantella, and Moy Bond spike bottles of champagne with ecstasy. Oh, there's a complaint forthcoming. He is a Philadelphia, Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Well, that's Meek Mill. Why, why did you redact his name? Redacted, but you didn't redact people's addresses? Okay, the Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj is Meek Mill. So he's saying that that person on Mr. Combs's yacht consorting with, I don't know what that means. That's not a very, that's a subjective term, but consorting with underage girls and SA and um, workers of an adult nature. And then... He is a Grammy award-winning R&B singer who has had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. That's Chris Brown. Why would you put all these details to kind of, imp you know, implicate who these people are? I mean, this very specific that a Grammy award-winning R&B singer who had trouble for assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. And why would you say Bayesian billionaire? This is very strange. I am sorry. This is very, very strange to me. And, you know, I looked at the Cassie lawsuit like, ooh, I believe this. And the other woman who was uh, the Jane Doe with the photographs of her being with, you know, Diddy and stuff like that. I was like, OK, well, I don't know what happened, but she definitely was with him and around him and all this type of stuff. But this is strange to me. A Grammy award winning R&B singer had trouble with, with law enforcement. 
That is just a strange thing to say. Let me check in with you guys in the comments section. How are you, because why are you suing Diddy and then putting these things in here? You know what I'm saying? It's like, do you actually want to win the lawsuit or do you just want to air your grievances in a court of law? I don't know. Yeah, this is so strange to me. Um, Pancake said, this is sounding less like a lawsuit, more like a character assassination essay. And it's like, did he already has a bad reputation? As I've talked about on this channel before, he has a terrible reputation. And so it's really easy to... um you know, uh, say, ah, oh, you know, here's another thing of Diddy being a bad guy. But you have to look at every single case individually for the type of case that it is and what's presented. And I'm only on page eight and it's forever and ever and ever and ever. This just doesn't seem right to me. This is not professionally written. Uh, and there are a lot of extraneous facts that don't go to Diddy having committed any Thing against him he's just saying and here's all this stuff I know about these other famous people that are not named in this lawsuit let me just throw it in there I don't understand that um I don't understand that but okay so here we go um maybe we're gonna get to something and I'll have to eat my words chalice recording studio shooting on or about September 12th of 2022, Mr. Combs held a writers and producers camp at Chalice Recording Studio in California. Present at this camp were Combs, Justin Combs, and Justin's friend named G. Mr. G is a 30-year-old tall African-American male. In addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. This writer has spoken several to several musicians who attended the camp. One evening during this camp, Combs, Justin Combs, and G were in a heated conversation. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where Jones was sitting. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when gunshots rang out. Mr. Jones recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and feared that he would be shot next. Jones genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. So you weren't even in the same room. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Combs and Justin Combs exited. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg hip area. Everyone stood around looking upon G. Frustrated by the lack of aid to G, Jones dropped everything, ran to G, and began placing pressure on his gunshot wound to his stomach. As he was applying pressure to his stomach, Jones realized that G was gushing blood from another area near his leg or hip. He decided to lift G and place him to sit on the toilet. Jones asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Jones lifted G and brought him to the ambulance at the studio's front. At this time, Combs and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. Okay, so asking you to lie to the police. And then here is a piece of the news story. Man shot outside party at Hollywood Recording Studio. Um, so they included that in there. Mr. Jones had several corroborating witnesses who spoke with this writer anonymously due to fear of retaliation from Combs. They have agreed to speak publicly when subpoenaed. Okay, so that could definitely back up this version of events, which contradicts what was told to the police and what's in the media. And that's, you know, not impossible that someone was pressured to lie to the police. Mr. Jones had the clothing he wore that day and believes it may still have the stains and DNA of G's blood. The following are screenshots of the aftermath of the restroom where G was shot by either Mr. Combs or Jay Combs. I mean, is G not suing for being shot is something I'm really questioning. And then also, um, okay, so he was, the story is he was shot outside, but here is the blood inside. Okay, so that is, that is something to corroborate what he says. G was not shot outside of the studio as Mr. Combs instructed his team to report to law enforcement. Combs and defendants LR, MR, UMG, and CRS provided private security for the writer's camp at defendant CRS. The security was porous and lackluster at best. The fact that either Mr. Combs or J. Combs and J. Combs were allowed to enter the CRS with guns and those guns were not confiscated by security is a clear breach of duty by Combs defendants LRMR UMG to protect Mr. Jones and the other attendees of this writer's camp but you were not injured I guess maybe he could say emotional here he goes PTSD okay as a result of this shooting Jones is severely traumatized he now suffers from PTSD anxiety depression and insomnia 
Okay. Jones was essayed, harassed by Mr. Combs. Throughout his time living with Mr. Combs, Jones was the victim of constant, unsolicited, and unauthorized groping and touching of his... <laughs> that word by Mr. Combs. I'm not squeamish, but I don't know if they're going to flag me for saying that word. So that word, these events took place in LA, New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin islands. In addition to the unsolicited unauthorized touching, but what do you mean by touch? That's a very specific area. It's not like your butt. It's the anatomical like part. That's interesting. Um, you, you good over there? You having fun? Are you having fun? Jazz is enjoying herself on my couch over there. In addition to the unsolicited, unauthorized touching, Jones was forced by Combs to work in Mr. Combs's bathroom as Mr. Combs walked around naked and showered in a clear glass enclosure. Okay, that's inappropriate for the workplace, for sure. Even though these are non-traditional workplaces, we said the same thing with Lizzo, that she needed to tighten up, you know, with your employees. You cannot treat them like friends. You can't do that because you're in a power differential. So even though I thought that lawsuit was bogus BS, I thought that she could protect herself in the future by being very strict with how she treated people that she pays. And I feel the same way with this. You got to really tighten that up. You cannot be naked around your employees. Um, as a heterosexual Christian man, oh my God. Okay. Let me just say this. A lot of the salaciousness around this story is the allegation that Diddy is attracted to men and that there is a there is a undercurrent of that in the Cassie lawsuit as well that he would pay Cassie to have sex with men and there's rampant homophobia in um the hip-hop community um there is homophobia in the uh Christian church uh not everywhere but it's it's still a significant issue and so a lot of this um media attention has been on the fact that he's a man. And I even put in my title that this time it's a man. Um, but honestly, that was me. I'm going to be very honest with you, capitalizing on the fact that people really care about that, but that does not matter male or female. You should not touch anybody without their consent, right. Um, without their enthusiastic consent. And so um, I don't think that the jet, the, gender of the person that he's alleged to have assaulted is relevant at all but clearly that matters to this person and it also could be an extra layer of distress if you're claiming emotional distress that someone that is not of your sexual orientation or who you are attracted to is trying to um entice you into sexual activity but i'm just saying that like i don't look at this case more salaciously because the accuser is a man that matters to me personally not at all i only care about consent right so if it's non-consensual you're in trouble right but this is important to him so this is something he brings up and i respect that um because it could add a additional layer of distress as a heterosexual Christian man, Mr. Jones was uncomfortable with Mr. Combs's advances and expressed his discomfort to Mr. Combs, chief of staff, KK. KK responded to Jones' complaint with, you know, Sean will be Sean. KK also attempted to downplay Mr. Combs groping Mr. Jones. How do you grope, grope someone's booty hole? Like, how do you do that? You Okay. But I don't think he means this. Like, I'm not saying that it didn't happen. Or that it did happen. I just think that this is not the right term. I don't think that's what he means. <laughs> because groping is not the... You can't grope that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you, you can do things to it. You can't grope it. Um, and so, I just don't think he means that. I think he means but. You know, that's what I think he means. But um, I, this is just not professionally written. Let me just put it that way. I think it's important to be anatomically correct. And I think that it's anatomically incorrect to use that term given what he's describing, but that's just me being overly skeptical or whatever. I don't know what I'm being, but it's not the right term. Um, and genitals as friendly horseplay saying that those acts were Combs way of showing you that he likes you. That's what KK said to him. So other people are aware of it and they downplay it and say, that's him showing it is not acceptable to grab your the intimate areas of your employees. So if this happened and people told him Sean will be Sean, he is 
absolute right to be distressed by that. And it is also sexual harassment because those are his intimate areas and they should not be touched by anyone without his consent, whether he's a Christian heterosexual man or not. Despite these assurances, on several occasions when Combs began to undress and walk around his house naked, KK would say, okay, I'm leaving now, and she would disappear. KK's hip hypocrisy is breathtaking at base. <sighs> okay. Despite these assurances on several occasions when Mr. Combs began to undress and walk around his house naked, KK would say, okay, I'm leaving now, and she would disappear. KK's hypocrisy is breathtaking at best or enabling at worst. Mr. Jones believes that KK aided and abetted Mr. Combs' sexual assault of him and was working with Mr. Combs to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship. I think that's a stretch. I think that's a stretch. Because that would be one thing for her to be like, you know, I'm getting a little kickback and I'm telling him to go in there and get essayed and I'm pimping him out, basically. It's another thing to be like, oh, that's just boys will be boys. He's just playing around. It's just like on the football field when guys pat each other on the butt. You know, it's it's nothing or whatever. You know, like it's 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 insensitive. It's inappropriate. But I don't think that it is necessarily um, her trying to get him to accept a homosexual relationship. That seems like a a leap, but you may disagree. So tell me what you think in the comments. Through these sexually deviant acts, one would say Mr. Combs has a pattern and practice of engaging in such nefarious activity. This ongoing conduct shows that Mr. Combs cannot be real bit rehabilitated. What is this relevant to? Cannot be rehabilitated. That's not an element of any um, of the torts that are claimed here. Mr. Combs attempted to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in gay sex. Okay. Mr. Combs was, there's like an undercurrent. Here's the thing is that I don't want to victim blame if he is in fact a victim. I don't want to do that. Um, and it just seems like the gay element of it seems so offensive to him <laughs> that it concerns me. But I have to also remember if I was essayed by a woman and I'm not oriented towards women, would that be an extra bit of insult to the injury? You know, and maybe that's what it is here. And so I'm trying to take myself out of my own like personal feelings on um, uh, gender relations and the LGBTQ community. And just really, I want to focus on the fact that it's all about consent. And if he doesn't consent to any type of sex with uh, this person, no matter their gender, then he has every right to sue for that. And so um, it's just interesting here, the, the verbiage just used. Steve, okay, so Mr. Combs is aware that Mr. Jones looked up to and idolized music producer Stephen Aaron Jordan, Stevie J. You idolize Stevie J? Uh, I don't know if you guys know about Stevie J. Stevie J was with Jocelyn and he was on like Love and Hip Hop or something like that. Very scandalous, but apparently he's a good producer. So maybe that's why. Okay. He's a record producer and television personality. Stevie J was part of the Bad Boy Records production team, The Hitman. In 1997, Stevie J won a Grammy Award for his work on Puff Daddy's debut album. Throughout the late 90s, Stevie J produced for several artists, including Mariah Carey, Tevin Campbell, The Notorious B.I.G., 112, Jodeci, Faith Evans, Jay-Z, and Eve. Him and Eve used to be in a relationship. I remember that. Okay. Stevie J was one of the producers on the Love album. Mr. Combs used access to Stevie J and his knowledge of Mr. Jones' admiration to, of Stevie, Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexuality. Mr. Combs went so far as to share a video of Stevie J having unprotected adult interactions with a Caucasian male. This was done to ease Mr. Jones's anxiety concerning homosexuality. According to Mr. Combs, this is a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing, oh, okay. Mm, I'm gonna get demonetized. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and then start sharing again. Hold on one second. I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to, there is a picture in here. I'm not sure what it shows and I don't want to get taken down. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in intercourse with rapper Redacted and R&B singer Redacted and Stevie J. Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys if he engaged in homosexuality. The following are screenshots of the video of Stevie J having unprotected rela relations with a Caucasian male that Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones. So, 
The reason I stopped sharing this is because, first of all, I can see it. But um, what some, oh, okay. So you can't, you can't see anything. Okay. I just wanted to be better safe than sorry. Um, I don't know why you would put this in the lawsuit other than to shame Stevie J. Um, this is kind of nuts. Like screenshots of S of adult activity being put into a initial filing of a lawsuit is because these types of things will come in and discover. And usually discovery isn't open to the public usually. Right. But the filings like the claim and the response and the motions, those things are. So you usually would be a little bit careful about putting something like this in the claim. So I don't know. I kind of feel almost like I don't like this. Stevie J is not a part of the lawsuit. He's not saying Stevie J did anything to him. He's just saying that I looked up to Stevie J and he sent me videos of Stevie J having unprotected relations with a Caucasian male to butter me up to later on have things with him. So he's saying that Diddy has admitted to him to having relations with Meek Mill, who is the Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Um, and... Usher, he performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. That's Usher. He just performed at the Super Bowl and he had a very successful Vegas residency. Um, this writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. Why would the court want to see this video? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, Diddy showed me gay adult activity, right? That's what Diddy did. But why would the judge need to see the video? There are some, I do not know if this is, this is Stevie J in the screenshots. I have no idea. Stevie J has denied this. Diddy has denied this. Justin Combs has denied it. Everyone's denied it. They've all released statements, but I'm not going to show you guys those screenshots. They're blurry. They're blacked out. I'm not comfortable with it because I also did hear Yeah, why the focus on whether or not he's Caucasian? Like, it's very strange. It's very, very blurry. Um, I shared the 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 link to this filing on my Twitter. I am not going to show it here. Why? But, like, I guess the question that I have is, what tort does that equal to? What... Okay. It's strange. Okay. Cause usually you just need in a claim to state the basis for the claim. And so far there's only been like one claim that he, or two that he stated that I'm like, okay, that could lead to some civil liability if proven to be true. So it's very strange. So on Thanksgiving day, 2022, Mr. Jones was in Mr. Combs house located in Miami, Florida. Young Miami and her female cousins were also present. It's also interesting that young Miami is not identified by her real name, her government name. It's young Miami and not her real name, nor is she a party to this case, nor is her cousin. And the cousin is not named by name either. So also very strange. And how does that implicate Diddy or the other people that are actually accused in this lawsuit? Huh. It's This does have, I'm not going to lie, it has bombshell allegations. They don't, most of them not alleging um, tortious conduct against the plaintiff, against Mr. Jones. They allege tortious conduct against other people, potentially, some of it is tortious conduct against Mr. Jones. But then the people he says did some of these things to him are not even named in the lawsuit. It's very strange. On Thanksgiving Day 2022, Jones was in Mr. Combs's house located in Miami, Florida. Young Miami and her female cousins were also present. Combs was intoxicated and offered cocaine to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones rejected him and proceeded to walk to the restroom. While using the restroom, young Miami's cousin burst into the bathroom and began groping Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs sent her in there to sexually assault Mr. Jones based on what? As she entered the bathroom, she dropped to her knees and began performing oral on Mr. Jones, exposing his genitalia. 
he pushed her away and exited the bathroom. Why are you suing Diddy for this? Young Maya's cousin did not accept Mr. Jones' rejection. She proceeded to follow Jones out of the bathroom. She started undressing and attempting to straddle him, straddle him and have intercourse with him in the presence of Combs and his staff. Once again, Jones pushed her off. The following are images from a video of Young Miami, her cousin, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Combs. Okay, nothing bad is happening here. Nothing bad is happening here. Jones and, and Combs... Jones and Mr. Combs on Thanksgiving Day, right before Mr. Combs invites Mr. Jones into the restroom and attempted to force him to take cocaine. That's not okay. You didn't say attempted to force you. You said he offered you cocaine and you said no. Oh, I'm so sorry. You said he offered you cocaine and he said no. And you said no. How is that attempting to force you? You got to be very careful with your language. Young Miami, her female cousin who sexually assaulted Mr. Jones. Okay, so why aren't you suing her? This proves you're all present together. This does not show this stuff happening, but presence is one of the things that you need to establish. You, you were around these people, but why aren't you suing young Miami's cousin? What's her name? Trafficking and Victims Protection Act. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was transported from California to New York to Florida and the United States Virgin Islands. During this time, Jones was forced to solicit uh, adult workers and perform acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs. Here we go. Okay, here are allegations of sexually related behavior that is actually actionable against Sean P. Diddy Combs. On or about February 4th, 2023, Combs forced Jones to bring prostitutes and sex workers back to his home in Miami, Florida. The sex workers that Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to bring back to his home. This is the sex worker here? Okay. On or about February 2nd, 2023 incident, Mr. Jones believed Mr. Combs drugged him, recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. He was in bed with two sex workers and Mr. Combs. He recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. Um, sex workers in Mr. Jones's bed the morning after being drugged. So I'm not going to show you that. Another occasion in Miami, Florida on Thanksgiving night of 2022, Combs asked Jones and DeForest Taylor to enter the studio bathroom. He asked them for a hundred dollar bill because he wanted them to do cocaine with him. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a hundred dollar bill. So Mr. Combs waited a little later to do coke with young Miami. Later that evening, he required Jones to solicit sex workers from booby trap on the river Mr. Jones did so and Combs forced him to engage in unsolicited sex acts with these workers. Okay. That's something. Booby trap on the river. Classy place. It's got its own van. I like that. A part of Mr. Jones' sex work requirement recruitment tools, Mr. Combs provided Jones with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to booby trap on the river as a signal to any sex worker he approached that Mr. Combs was in town and had sent Mr. Jones to recruit them. Okay. Mr. Jones had no desire to visit booby trap on the river. He had no desire to solicit sex workers from booby trap on the river. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones to into soliciting sex workers from booby trap on the river. As detailed below, Combs used many tactics to maintain domin dominion and control over Jones. Apparently, these workers were accustomed to servicing Combs and would know that he is in town by the sight of the bad boy baseball cap. The following are Instagram profiles of two of the sex workers that Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to solicit and have sex with at his home in Miami, Florida. Wait, he's forcing you to pick up prostitutes and forcing you to have sex with the prostitutes, but he's not? Or is he? I don't know. That Well, he did say he woke up in bed with Combs in the bed. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit and or have sex with the individuals in the previous paragraph. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into solic soliciting and sleeping with these women. For what? Like, okay, so with Cassie, what does he gain out of that? With Cassie, unless he's watching like he did with Cassie, allegedly. With Cassie, she said that he would have a guy procure sex workers to have male sex workers to have sex with Cassie in front of Diddy so that he could get some type of, you know, enjoyment out of it. So I would really like to know kind of like the why 
of this. And that might be me trying to understand a sick mind, but I'm just not sure. He had noticed that, okay, the following is the phone number of another sex worker that Combs required Jones to solicit and perform sex acts with at his home in Miami, Florida. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit and or have sex with the individual in the previous paragraphs. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Jones into soliciting and sleeping with the individuals above. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control over Jones. He promised him a Grammy for producer of the year for the Love album. He offered him $250,000 to purchase all the instruments he wanted. He promised him ownership of his $20 million property, One Star Island, Miami, Florida. He promised access to record label executives like defendants Lucy and Charles Grange in Ethiopia, Habtamarium. Combs would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Jones the world to threatening Jones with physical harm. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face and inform Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs, if he must in order to get what he wants. So he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. Yikes. That's scary. What are we thinking, guys? Yeah, a picture of sex workers is not proof. A picture of a man is not proof. I, okay. Mr. Combs and Jay Combs solicit drugs and engages in illicit sex acts with minors and sex workers. This is not a claim for this plaintiff. That would be a claim for those sex workers if they wanted to. That would be a claim for them. That is not a claim for him. So the, everything before just now, like just that that previous paragraph, those would be claims for him, for Mr. Jones. Combs and his son sleeping with sex workers has nothing to do with Mr. Jones. And there's a few things in here like that. Like that doesn't have anything to do with you. It's salacious, but how is it relevant? On or about July 2nd, 2023 in California, Combs had a listening party at his home. Present at this party was an R&B artist, Jay Combs, sex workers, and some underage girls. Let's see which one they're going to say it is. He is a Grammy Award winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. So Chris Brown, allegedly. They're alleging Chris Brown. And I'm not saying it, Chris Brown was there. I'm just saying that's the allegation. I don't like how this is written. I think it demeans the integrity of such a serious allegation. Um, but he didn't say that Diddy did anything to him other than he said they woke up in the bed together in this paragraph here. Previously, he said that Diddy grabbed him in a sexual way. This stuff about young Miami's cousin, completely irrelevant to the entire lawsuit. She's not even mentioned by name. So I don't know about this, man. Okay, so, but you're bringing in Meek Mill, Chris Brown and Usher and just basically calling everybody gay. Gr and Stevie J gratuitously, gratuitously calling people gay. That's really what this comes down to. And I don't understand that because unless it gives rise to a claim, why are you doing that? It's not a crime or a tort to be gay or bisexual or any of those things. So what is the point of putting that whole Stevie J part in there? I don't understand that. And there are allegations that Stevie J is not even the person in that video, that that's an actual uh, pornographic film um, of two known actors. But I don't know the answer to that because in one of the pictures, it does look like Stevie J, but I, people can look alike and it's very blurry. So I don't know. In addition to sex workers, there were at least five women in the crowd that were under the age of 16. Um, the event began at 7 p.m. Combs requested a female sex worker and a, required Jones to solicit them. An hour later, several sex workers appeared. Combs forced all the women to drink laced Deleon liquor. Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs laced the liquor with ecstasy. Mr. Combs did not check the identification of any of the, these underage girls. Okay, but that means that you procured and solicited underage girls for Diddy. You're a co-defendant. You're a co-conspirator in that. What do you mean? Unless he beat you into doing it, you're telling you're telling on yourself that you helped to procure underage girls under the promise that you were going to get a Grammy in one of his houses and $250,000 for instruments. N 
you can never tell me, Natalie, I'm going to eat your face off. And so I'll go and procure underage girls. Are you out of your mind? I don't know. I don't like this guy very much. I'm being very honest with you. And you know how I feel about Diddy. I think he's shady as shit. And I, I believe Cassie's allegations for sure. And I think some of those other women are telling the truth. But this, this makes me highly uncomfortable. It seems manipulative is what it seems like. He's like hitting all the notes with what in the hip hop community will get a lot of clicks and um you know engagement and eyes on something and maybe raise his profile and like i just i fought for my heterosexuality but a lot of it is like you went and procured prostitutes you went and got them and you went and you got underage girls so you don't sound like a good person to me at all he didn't check identification did you check identification before you brought them over to diddy who you know does drugs and all types of crazy stuff are you serious? He attempted to leave and Mr. Combs forced him to stay. How? Mr. Combs went so far as to make Mr. Jones car take his car keys to prevent him from leaving. Call an Uber. After being forced to drink Lace De Leon shots, Jones began feeling lightheaded and recalls passing out and waking up at 4 a.m. the following morning naked and with a sex worker sleeping next to him. Screenshots of the video from that night are embedded below. The writers in possession of the video will provide a copy to the court. We're going to just go past that real quick. Mr. Combs and Cuban Gooden Jr. moments before Mr. Jones is assaulted. Okay. 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 So this is, that's not explicit, but this appears explicit. I'm not showing that. Mr. Combs attempts to pass off Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs was grooming him to pass him off to his friends. This fear became reality when Combs introduced Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. while they were on Mr. Combs' yacht. During the introduction, Mr. Combs suggested that Cuba get to know Mr. Jones better. He then left them alone in a makeshift studio in the yacht. Mr. Combs and Cuba Gooding Jr. moments before Mr. Jones is assaulted. As evidenced by a video of which screenshots are, screenshots are embedded below, Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Jones's legs, upper arm, inner thighs, near his groin, groin, the small of his back, near his buttocks, and under his shoulders. Why are you not suing Cuba Gooding Jr.? I don't understand. Is a lawsuit forthcoming in another state? I don't understand this. Took too big of a sip just now. So let me just kind of give some legal analysis so far. There's a lot of fluff in here. And you need evidence that Diddy was like, um, you know, go sexually assault Mr. Jones. You know what I mean? Like, and... The, there's at least an implication here. So I guess maybe he'll try to prove it. I don't know how, but the direct person you should be suing is Cuba Gooding Jr. He has many allegations and convictions. He has several convictions for groping people, women against their will. So why aren't you going after him? That's weird. So let's look. Okay. Okay. Cuba Gooding Jr. forcibly touching Mr. Jones on Mr. Combs's yacht. Okay. Just. Uh, this is his hand right here is on the arm of the sofa. He's got his other arm around him. We know Cuba, Cuba Gooding Jr. gets handsy with people because he's been convicted in a court of law for groping people against their will. All right, so just sink that in for what you think it's worth. Okay, let that sink in. The Love Album. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was under an implied work-for-hire agreement. He was not compensated for his time living with Mr. Combs or for the songs he produced. That's a problem. That's actionable. But what do you mean by an implied agreement? You didn't have an actual contract? Why not? But if he had you working with the expectation of compensation and you never received it and he promised you things, you never got them, even that's a verbal contract, verbal contracts are still contracts. So that is something to pursue. He was not compensated for his time living with Mr. Combs or for the songs he produced. Did you have to pay for anything? Did you get free lodging? Did you get food? Did you get transportation? That is also payment. So to be very careful to get everything written down so you can know exactly what it is that you're owed. As evidence, he was listed as a producer for the following songs in the Love Album's final release. 
these songs. I'm not going to go through them. Combs and defendants LR, MR, UMG all benefited from Mr. Jones' work product. They failed to compensate him for his work. There you go. I would like to see this man compensated for his work. Combs and defendants LR, MR, UMG were all unjustly enriched at the expense of Jones. Jones attempted to work with Combs to secure his publishing and royalty rights for the work he completed. And Diddy is notoriously bad. I went through an article on this in one of the live streams I covered this. Notoriously terrible about not paying people back. Not giving, like just taking everyone's money and not paying people back. So this is something he's known for. Not far-fetched that this actually happened. I just feel like there's dust everywhere. And I just had this house cleaned. Um... He only offered Jones $29,000 for 13 months, thousands of hours of work, and nine songs that made it to the Love Album. Ironically, Jones was willing to take $50,000, his publishing, and royalties. Combs' self-serving greed would not allow him to pay Mr. Jones an additional $21,000. And you know he's got it, too. Um, Mr. Gooding Jr. has a storied history of sexually assaulting and forcibly touching individuals against their will. Yes, he does. It's just very, very, very interesting that... Okay. Let me shut up. Combs' deceptive business practices became so bad that Jones was left with no choice other than to make a public plea on social media for Combs to pay him for his work. Good for you. After publicly requesting that Mr. Combs do the right thing and pay him fairly, Jones received an onslaught of threatening messages from Stevie J and Love Records A&R DeForest Taylor. DeForest, line two. You playing. I'm in studio. LOL. You a 100% liar and weirdo. Good luck. Number still the same. Run into this. Come talk to me in public on a public podcast and forum. Okay. D. Forrest Taylor threatening Mr. Jones. What are these pictures relevant to though? Okay. He says, come talk to me in public on a public podcast and forum. That's not... That's not a threat. Saying to come talk to me on a public podcast is not a threat. But okay. You do deserve to be fairly compensated. $29,000 is probably not enough for the work that you did. Um, so a, a court will or a jury will figure that out for you. Mr. Combs uses power and influence to threaten and intimidate Jones. According to Jones, Combs is very forceful and demanding. Combs does not take no for an answer and would often threaten to inflict bodily harm on Jones if Jones did not comply with his demands. Threats of bodily harm are actionable in civil court. As detailed above, Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face. That's actionable, you know, as harassment, threat, threats is sometimes a separate civil claim depending on where you are, intentional infliction of emotional distress, um, all types of things like that. So definitely something he should pursue this guy threatened to eat your face. That's wild. Um, on another occasion, while standing in Mr. Combs's bedroom, Jones was forced to watch as Combs displayed his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people, which can be taken as an implied threat. Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York City with rapper Shine. So um, this happened in 1999. Shine went to prison for this. Diddy did not. He shared that artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, a.k.a. J-Lo, I knew she was going to come up in this, carried the gun into the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into an altercation with another individual, which is wild because the whole thing was that she had nothing to do with the gun and she was just arrested because she happened to be with him. And that was the end of their relationship after that. <sighs> Sean Combs, Jennifer Lopez arrested after New York shooting. The shooting in Chalice Recording Studio confirmed that confirmed Mr. Combs' statements. These statements reinforced Mr. Jones's fear. Hold on one second. Okay, fear of Mr. Combs and strengthening Mr. Combs' dominion and control over Jones. Dominion and control is such an interesting phrase because that's usually what's used when it comes to like possession of some illegal substance or item. You say that they have dominion and control over it in order to establish possession. So what they probably mean is domination and not dominion, but very interesting turn of phrase. Jones is terrified of Combs. He felt like he could not tell him no. Fair enough. 
Combs consistently made it clear that he was has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement. Fair enough. Combs made it clear that his head security, Fahim Muhammad, had the power to make people and problems disappear. Fahim Muhammad. Oh, Fahim, poor guy. Because <laughs> just because Diddy says that about you doesn't mean that you're like a violent person or anything. <laughs> Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. Upon information and belief, Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at the studio. The LAPD was in the studio and witnessed the blood in the restroom, and they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside the studio. This is all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections with law enforcement. Interesting. Jones had no reason to disbelieve Mr. Combs as he had seen firsthand through the shooting of G that the subsequent silence of the LAPD and the media that Combs indeed had the power to harm him. The LAPD spent hours in CRS after the shooting of G, yet there were no arrests. Mr. Jones witnessed the LAPD in the restroom pictured above, yet no arrests were made. The morning after the shooting, Jones had and several others arrived at the studio and G's blood was still on the floor of the restroom and Mr. Combs hired a cleaning crew to clean it up. Defendants Ethiopia, Habitamarium, Lucian Charles Grange, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group aided, abetted, and profited off of Sean Combs' Rico Enterprise. Okay, let's take a break here and let me check in with you guys. 513 of, of you are here right now. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, please make sure that you like the video. They love the word dominion yeah it's and it's not really appropriate you know dominion power and control are the like this three-prong establishment of possession of an item usually um dominion is also where um it, you know like a king has over his domain he has do dominion over his roman uh, uh domain um, he, they rule over that. So it's really not the appropriate term to repeatedly use in this context, but I understand what they're trying to say. Um, I am also tired and I kind of feel like I don't want to read any more of this, not because, okay, so let me just kind of wrap up where I'm at right now. Okay. Um, I don't know. Some of this, okay, let's let's just do this in a part one and a part two, and we'll come back for part two tomorrow because it's, it really is going to be too, too long. We're on page 25, 26, 27. We're on page like 28, okay? We're on page 28, and here is what I think about the claims so far. Some of these are fluff. Some of this is salaciousness for the media, not for the court. And some of this could potentially be actionable, such as him threatening to eat his face off, grabbing him in in a in his intimate areas without his consent. Um, but other things for people that are not named as like Cuba Gooding Jr. is not one of the named defendants. Um, uh, Young Miami and her cousin are not named defendants. Some of the things that are alleged are big chunks of activities for which you cannot say that Combs is responsible. And I'm also concerned that he's like, yeah, I procured sex workers for him. And some of these girls were underage. So you procured underage girls. You can't sue him for that. You were doing it too, you know, and you were sleeping with some of these people. I don't know if they're adults or not, but the implication is there. So I don't really know if I trust this person. Um, and Yes, it seems like this lawsuit is more suited for the press than a court of law. That's exactly how I feel. I just don't feel as though this is a professionally written lawsuit. I think that there's a lot of fat in it that needs to be trimmed and no complaint should be 70 something pages long. That's ridiculous. And we've already made it to like, like usually a complaint will be a long complaint will be 30 something pages. I mean, I've seen complaints that are four, five, six pages long, and it's completely acceptable because it gets the case started. It's just supposed to get the case started and put the other person on notice of what the allegations are. Even in a state that requires you to plead with particularity, 70-something pages is ridiculous. Um, and it just, it's, uh, yeah, it feels like TMZ wrote this or chat AI. You know, it's just, it's just, you know, brevity is the spice of life, man. It's just way too long. And there's too much stuff in there that feels like a big case of, you know, this makes Diddy look bad. This makes these celebrities look bad. And I feel, Jillian says seconded, and I feel um, that I don't get my fair due. And so I'm going to throw all these people under the bus. You know what I mean? Like, 
I don't see why that whole, oh, here's evidence that Stevie J was having gay sex. So he wasn't having gay sex with you. He didn't physically sexually come on to you. You said that Diddy said, oh, here's an example of Stevie J doing this. First of all, why do you even still have that? Because if Diddy is showing it to you, why do you have it? I don't know. It's just very strange. So Cameo Stark has been a member for 14 months and says Native American whistle at night equals evil spirits. That was from our icebreaker. Hey, girl. Oh, Diddy. Messy and messy son. Shake my head. Lady T, thank you so much for being a member for seven months. J. Michael RN has been a member for 28 months. Thank you so much. Take off your shoes and like the video. Thank you. Um, Yorkie Mom 68 says, glad to see you back. Natalie, really missed you. Thank you for being a member for 30 months, and I'm so happy to be back. Monet, hey, Monet. Thank you for being a member for 16 months. And um, we have one from Lady T. Thank you for the super chat. I spoke too soon. This guy is all over the place. Yeah, Ah, uh, the sensationalized, you know, reporting. Um, someone said that the lawyer gets paid by the word. That's how it seemed, or paid by the letter. It's just, it was just a mess. It was just a mess. I'm sorry. I, I'm not feeling this lawsuit. Not to say that nothing happened. I just think that the lawyer did him a disservice by writing this super long complaint that has things that are extraneous to any allegations against Diddy. So, um. Thank you so much, Meso Carib. I hope 2024 is going better than 2023 so far. I would say that it is. 2023 was a hot mess. A hot mess. Oh, my goodness. Woo! It's just a mess. Okay. So, anyway, I want to thank all of you guys for coming to join me on this. We'll do this in a part one, part two. I'm not reading all of that tonight. It's 843 at night here um, in the D.C. area. I want to go to bed. Okay? I, don't, <laughs> I want to get ready for bed. I want to take off my makeup. I want to put on my ba my bathrobe. I want to take a shower. I don't want to read any more salacious details that don't have anything to do with Diddy assaulting him or taking his money. But I want to know what you guys think. So please make sure that you comment in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for being amazing supporters after all this time. It's been years now. Thank you guys so, so much. And I will see you later. Okay, so that's what I heard as well. Hold on one second. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Wait, 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 wait. I think it's clipper in. Okay, let's pause that. I'm coming back. And let me take this off. So exactly um, that, that's what I'm saying. It makes me question the whole lawsuit. So real quick, real quick. Um, Stevie J screen shots not him yeah okay so look this is from hip-hop dx i'm gonna show it to you right now oh no i'm not gonna show you hip-hop dx because the person that um the person that runs that is a is a is a lunatic um so i'm gonna do, use radar um it's not stevie j and so that makes me thank you so much meso carib Thank you for gifting five Natalie Lawyer Chick memberships. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Let me just show you guys something real, real quick. And it's an article, and it's what makes me question this entire thing, okay? Um, Diddy lawsuit, adult film star Knockout claims his image was used in male producer's bombshell suit, not Stevie J. A male adult film star spoke out after his images were used in the SA lawsuit against Diddy by male music producer Lil Rod. D'Angelo Knockout Marquis said his photos were misused in the case brought against the music mogul. Um, as RadarOnline.com previously reported, producer Lil Rod sued, claiming Diddy, real name Sean Combs, subjected him to unauthorized groping. The producer said he lived and traveled with Diddy from September 22 to November 23. Lil Rod worked on Diddy's latest album, Love. The suit claims Combs required Jones to record him constantly. Combs took Jones' cell phone and began to record himself. He has hundreds of hours of video. Um, Lil Rod said he witnessed Diddy along with Diddy's inner cir circle procure XC, cocaine, GHB, blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. We have read all that. So we know all that. This is Knockout, 
who in this angle does look a little bit like Stevie J. So um, the ex executive also attempts to downplay Mr. Combs groping of Mr. Jones as friendly horseplay. Jones said he believed he was being groomed by Diddy. Don't care. So you see, this is the real Stevie J. I don't know if he's still married to Faith, but he was married to Faith at one point in time. I don't know if he still is. That's Stevie J, and this is Knockout. See that? There is a similarity there. Especially because Stevie J has a mustache a lot of the time. He doesn't have a mustache in this picture, but he does have one. Um... So his attorney, Diddy's attorney, Sean Holly says, this is not a well-written article. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof of Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored. As Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls, we will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of almost want to do a poll. Um... I don't know, but I'm not going to because I want to go to bed. All right, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. I am skeptical about this one. I'm just going to say it. I'm skeptical about this one, but I'll keep an open mind and see what plays out in court. But the fact that um, he finalized his divorce from Faith in 2023. So so the fact that, um, you know, some of the allegations may be actionable is something, but the fact that his attorney's Diddy's attorneys have reached out to Jones's attorney to say, these are false. Here's our proof. And he's not returning their phone calls. That's not cool. That's not, you don't do that. You take the phone call, you take any evidence that goes against your case because you don't want to bring a false case before the court. So it just makes me look at the case very, very skeptically. Okay. All right, my friends, I will talk to you later. Have a good night. Bye.